So you sit down to write. And something can happen with words that never happened before. This is the learning process. You can achieve an emotional insight, an intellectual insight. You can achieve growth in your writing style. You can structure an essay in a way you've never structured an essay before. But there's one question that can stop the process cold. How will I be graded on this? The very act of judgment can interrupt the learning and creating process. Now, how does this happen and why does this happen? Alfie Cohn, who has written widely and speaks widely on human behavior and education, has written an essay called From Degrading to Degrading. And he's noted three main effects of grading based on uh, many academic studies. And the first of these three effects is that grades tend to reduce students' interest in the learning itself. So these studies come from the field of motivational psychology. And these studies show that the more that people are rewarded for doing something, the more they tend to lose interest in whatever they had to do to get the reward. So in other words, the more that students focus on the grade, on getting a good grade and being an A student, for example, the less they're going to be interested in what they have to do to get the good grade. The second main effect that he's noticed is that grades tend to reduce students' preference for challenging tasks. And this is just common sense. If your primary goal is to get good grades, well then you wouldn't want to take risks or do anything that might jeopardize getting the highest grade possible. You're going to take the path of least resistance. You're going to do the safest thing to get the highest grade. And the third effect is that grades tend to reduce the quality of students' thinking. For example, uh, Cohn cites a study that shows that students who know that they are going to get a letter grade are much worse at creative thinking than students who are going to get qualitative feedback, in other words, written comments, helpful suggestions, comments that point out strengths and suggests areas that could be worked on and developed. Cohn has many other uh, points that he makes about grades, and to me, one of the most interesting is that grades waste a lot of time that could be spent on learning. And again, this is obvious from the student's point of view. If students are spending a lot of time checking on Progress Book or Blackboard to see what their GPA is or worrying about what the guidelines are so that they could meet the guidelines, well, then they're not doing any unique, original, creative thought. And from the professor's point of view, if the professor is developing rubrics that are common to all the students and then trying to fit each individual assignment into that rubric, well, then the instructor does not have time to give qualitative feedback to each individual student. Not only is that a lot of time spent on these uh, activities, but it's time with bad energy. It's time that creates a bad feeling. And so it is a waste of time. Cohn's essay builds to a really interesting conclusion. What is the best thing a professor can do for his or her students? And his answer is, this. Helping students forget about grades is the single best piece of advice for those who want to create a learning-oriented classroom. Well, that sounds like good advice. So, how are we going to do? We're going to trade in the traditional letter grades for a simple check check minus an X on individual assignments, which means I did it. I kind of did it, but I could do it better. Or oops, I didn't really do that. Okay, how's it gonna work? 
Let's take a look at three sample case studies. Student A, student B, and student C. So we'll start with student A. And we all know student A, you know student A, some of you are student A. What are the characteristics of student A? Student A is very determined. Student A does all assignments to the best of her ability. Student A is great focused. Student A is a little OCD. Student A will check a progress book or blackboard and keep up on where that GPA stands. And unfortunately, uh, student A may be, have been drawn into a little bit of competitiveness with her fellow students. So you know student A is going to do reading one there and get a check and do it well. You know student A is going to do her sentence exercise and do it well and there's another check. And she's going to do the other uh, readings as well. And then we're going to come to essay one. And the first thing you're going to notice is essay one is worth two assignments. Essays are worth a little more. And she's going to get a check minus. Why does she get a check minus on essay one? Essays are process, right? You begin somewhere, but then there's work to do. And if she does the revisions, and you know student A is going to do the revisions, watch what's going to happen with those minuses. You know that she's going to do work, you know that her work is going to be substantial, and the minuses are just going to disappear as she brings her revision forward, so that she gets checks for essay one. Her writing is growing, she's growing, she does the next exercise and the next one. Essay two, same deal. She'll start with a check minus, but she'll revise it. She does all the other exercises. Essay three goes through a revision. Check minus might slip in somewhere or other, but student A is gonna be working very hard. We notice the final essay is a major exercise, the major project of the course. It's worth uh, four uh, marks there, four check minuses to begin with. Of course, she's going to work hard on the revision. These will come up to uh, checks. She'll get a grade slip like this at the end of the class with almost all checks, if not all checks. So what are the advantages of this system for student A? Well, rather than conform to external expectations as she's done all her life, she has actually been released to focus on internal growth. As student A says herself, my writing has progressed dramatically this semester because I've been able to focus on myself and my own flaws. It's not all about the grade because the grade is just a measly check anyway. It feels fantastic to walk into class and not worry about losing to somebody or showing my worth. Sometimes it feels like a luxury that I haven't been interrogated about my current GPA. That's the thing. It isn't about the grades, it's about the writing. For a final, student A, like all the other students, will do a project in which she tells the class what she has learned. This can affect her grade up or down, but no doubt she will get an A overall on the course, as there was no doubt she was gonna get an A right from the start. There is no great anxiety. She does her best work. She grows as a writer. And that's the end of that story. Let's move on to student B. What are the characteristics of student B? Student B works hard. Student B is a good student, but student B is not real good with this whole word thing. For example, the first reading, student B just didn't get it. But he keeps working. He does the next exercise, and on the next reading, he gets a little help, and he gets a check, and the same with the third reading. He moves along, essay one, he gets check minuses, he tries to respond to the qualitative feedback, still doesn't get that, he gets a check minus even on his revisions. He gets some checks, he gets some check minuses, things move along. He gets a little help with his uh, essay two, and he does get that revised to a check. Essay three, he thinks he can do it by himself. He tries hard, but
but he can't get that up to a check. Again, check minuses and checks here and there. On the final essay, he gets check minuses, he goes to the success center, and he's able to get that mostly up to a check. Gets his final uh, assignment done, he gets his grade slip, and he's got a whole bunch of check minuses. So at this point, we need to introduce a formula because we do have to translate student B's uh, grade slip into a grade that the university can understand. So here's the formula we're going to use. Three check minuses equal an X. Each X lowers the final grade one letter. Anybody can have a bad day, anybody can have two bad days, so everyone gets two free X's. So what's that gonna look like? Student B has nine check minuses. Three check minuses equal an X. He gets two free X's, so six check minuses will disappear. Watch them go. That leaves them with three check minuses, three check minuses equal an X, and one X lowers the final overall grade from an A to a B. Student B does his final. What has he learned? He presents that to the class, and the final can change his uh, final course grade either up or down depending on how well he does on the final and that's his final course grade. What are the advantages for student B? Well, because he received qualitative feedback and not letter grades, he learns what his strengths are. He learns what he has to build from. And he learns what his areas of weakness are that are within his scope to improve. He may always have comma splices, he may always have run-ons, but there may be some things that he can work on that he can improve. And finally, he has the ability to write some essays that are personally meaningful to him, and that is an important experience that everybody should have. Let's move on to student C. She is intelligent and engaged in class, although she misses class now and then. She tends to forget deadlines, and she doesn't revise or hone her work. So let's see how the system is going to work out for student C. Oops, forgot to do the first reading. But when she does her work, it's pretty darn good. On essay one, she has a pretty good and pretty promising first draft. She gets a check minus like everyone else, but she does not do a revision. In fact, the revisions are not required, but they are strongly recommended. She does pretty good on her uh, assignments when she does them, but again, essay two, she does not revise nor does she revise essay three. Forgot that one. Wasn't there that day. On the final essay, which is again the major assignment and counts as four, so this is four X's, she finds herself in a big pickle. Now the final essay, because it's such a major assignment, we do spend a month on in terms of preparation but student C, who has an issue also with procrastination, kind of waited till the last minute and that pretty much explains the X. So this one she did feel compelled to do a little bit of revision on, but it's really hard to um, start from an X with your revision. She uh, does some good work though and manages to pull out one X and two check minuses, which is uh, a bit of a coup. And does well on the final assignment. So her situation, she has three X's, the first two uh, disappear, they're free, so she goes from an A to a B there. Then she has all these check minuses which eventually lower her grade to an F plus. She will get a chance to do a final and to tell the class what she has learned. But the fact is, if you look at her first essay and you look at her last essay, you probably won't see much of a difference. And so the odds are that she hasn't really learned all that much. And the F plus is probably a pretty fair grade 
for the work she's done in the class. What are the advantages of this grading system for student C? Well, the fact is that it's a choice whether or not to learn, and this grading system shows that to the student what choice that student has made. From the professor's point of view, there is no judgment or shame. Things happen uh, that cause a student to do assignments or not do assignments, to work or to not work. Things happen. The truth reveals itself in the system, and then the student is free to do what he or she wishes with that truth. Now, these were just three case studies. There are an infinite number of students, types of students, um, issues that students face in their work. And in my experience, this uh, system, so to speak, can accommodate all different types of students and the issues that students face. Now you see how the grading system works in the end. The way to do well in this course is to forget about the grades, to do each assignment to the best of your ability as it comes up, each assignment builds on the previous assignment and leads to the following assignment. And to try to learn something with each assignment that is valuable to you and will help you grow as a writer. You might even find that you eventually write a sentence as clear and concise and meaningful as these students who came before you. Come on, skinny love, just lay singing. And I'm told